system platform at its core is its strength is in standards. Now, some may say, well, what, why, why is that valuable? So typically what happens in so many of these projects that people execute them is there's inconsistencies. So that you're inconsistent in the way you approach, whether it's visuals, whether it's data structures, whether it's script and, and business logic that you execute. And that inconsistency makes it very difficult for an organization to have consistent results. So we start everything from those standards to drive that, that consistency, but those standards also drive productivity. So you're getting quick productivity by instead of you having to go and redevelop everything every time, you kind of start with those standards and then you roll them out rapidly. Another aspect of the things that make a system platform quite unique in, in its value proposition is it's in a distributed nature. What I mean by the distributed nature of that is that instead of having a single machine where everything gets installed, very often you have reasons why I may have to have localized compute resources over here or localized compute resources over here. We can have hundreds of machines working as a single collective in system platform. It's extremely unique in the marketplace. System platform, I often think of, has kind of like three kind of target audiences. So the first target audience are the operations teams. We wanted to make sure that they have the best results in achieving optimal situational awareness and the things that they're doing on a daily basis. Kind of the second targeted people that we're looking at are kind of the engineering. The engineering organizations that have to manage a larger system, they will see this that there's a lot of things and capabilities inside of a system platform that really facilitate those system, larger system needs. The kind of third person are kind of the IT, IT owners, the people have to own that software and have to update the software and manage it over time. And there's a significant aspect of the way that System Platform approaches a larger application and a broad holistic approach that is, again, extremely unique to the way a System Platform takes that on. An existing InTouch customer might start considering System Platform when they start seeing the needs of their organization change. I often talk about a concept I refer to as automation maturity. So you may start with local process cell execution so that the things that I'm doing are only of concern in this particular area. But as you start to look to try and coordinate execution, as you start to plan things and provide, provide greater visibility throughout an organization, that's in a case where you may start to look at augmenting or moving into a system platform type structure so you can take those independent in-touch applications and start consolidating them into a single application. An operations management interface is a next leap when you start looking at the types of user interfaces you can provide, where it's very touch-based, very uh, layout-oriented so that you can do things like responsive designs um, and also do what we refer to as dynamic visualization. What I mean by that is that instead of every piece of content that you put inside of OMI having to be built, in essence you create a data model and you point your layout at the data model so that it also significantly reduces the time for you to have these fantastic results. Operations Management Interface is a ground-up technology that we wrote uh, well, several years back we introduced it. It was in 2017 when we had the first version went out to market. And the notion that we were trying to address there was we had, we had started to see that customers had applications with large amounts of content and it was continuing to grow. So instead of the general notion where you had where you build every piece of content and then you link it through with navigation, we realized we needed to take a different approach, an approach that was more data-driven. So that when if it got to the point where you had thousands or tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of pieces of content, how could we get it so that your cost didn't scale with the size? Because once you defined your standard, then as you roll out that standard, your costs remain even. And we took that data-driven approach to how we do visualization in OMI to gain that new levels of experience while, while maintaining the costs at the constant level or lower than what you would have had with traditional mechanisms.